Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm at home. As you can see, I got this 2006 Toyota Sienna behind me. The customer brought it because the truck is overheating. I've already diagnosed the truck, so we're just gonna run through the job that we're gonna do, which is gonna be changing out the thermostat on this truck. We're also gonna be doing spark plugs on this van, which means we gotta remove this wiper cowl back here so that we can remove the intake so that we can access the back three spark plugs. It's a pretty labor intensive job. The spark plugs themselves call for about 3.5 hours. The thermostat calls for about 1.5. So all in all, it's a pretty good job. It's gonna be good money. So I'm gonna bring you guys along so I can show you guys how to do the thermostat and the spark plugs. Then we're gonna beat the system. We're gonna go test drive it. We're gonna make sure that everything's good. And then we're gonna ship the van on its way and it'll be better than it came in. And I got a special guest with me. I got the little homie Omar. You gonna help me, Omar? Yeah. Yeah? You ready to work? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, pound it. Here, high five. High five. Boom, pound it. Okay. You ready to work, puppy? Yeah. Yeah? You look ready. You got a vest, you got a hoodie. It's yeah. cold, huh? Yeah. Yeah? You're sick? Yeah. Tan malito? Yeah. You got a fever? Yeah. Yeah? You look okay. You ready to work now? Yeah. Okay, say I'm ready. Ready. Okay, let's go. Say, Dale. Pégale aquí. Right here. Give your hand. On this Sienna, the way I figured out it was a thermostat, pretty simple. I had the truck running, there was no leaks. As you guys can see, the radiator cap or coolant fill cap, it's right by the cowl, so I couldn't put a pressure tester on there. And when I had the truck running, this hose right here was super warm. This hose right here was cold to the touch. So on this van, the thermostat sits right in there. So that is a dead indication that when coolant is circulating through the engine, on its way back to the radiator if that coolant if that coolant hose is cold that means that that thermostat is stuck closed and it's not letting the hot coolant get back to the radiator so that it can cool and get back in there and cool the engine so stuck thermostat we're going to be replacing it we're going to be removing the intake manifold so we can access the back three plugs three of them are pretty simple they live right right here under this cover they're pretty easy to access we're going to start off by removing this wiper cowl so that we can access the plugs so let's get to work we're gonna start off with the wipers I'm gonna be using my little impact and we're gonna get it done so just so you guys have an idea right now it is 933 and like I said this is like a three to four hour job I'm gonna start off with the plugs just because I gotta remove all this and that's gonna make it easier for me to access the thermostat once I have everything off so about a four hour job, we'll see how long it takes to get it done with the working and the recording and everything. All right, so let's go. Start off by taking these little plastic covers that go on the wipers. I'm gonna use a 14 millimeter with my Milwaukee on these nuts right here. Two nuts for the wipers. To take them off, you're gonna have to bend them up here and that takes tension off of this part right here and you can just pull it off. All right, now you wanna keep in mind the position of the wiper, and I'm gonna leave that little bit of dirt there on the window so that when I put this back, it goes back in the exact same spot and not too high or not too low on the wipers. So this is the driver's side wiper. I'm gonna put it down here on the floor on the driver's side of the car. Passenger side wiper arm, I'm gonna lay it down on the passenger side floor. You wanna be organized when you're working so that you don't confuse left and right. Okay, so now I'm gonna start working over here by removing this chingadera. So it has this little clip, hopefully you can see that. This little clip right here, that's what's holding it in there. So you just gotta squeeze it so that you can get it out of there. And it should come up with these. There's a bunch of other little clips right here like this. You just gotta pry those up a little bit and they don't come loose. Okay, so here's the wiper cowl. Pretty easy to get to. Alright, so this is what we're looking at now with the wipers and that wiper cowl removed. Well, at least the cover. Now we gotta remove this wiper motor and everything out of here so that we can get 
the rest of it out, okay? I believe this is just one, two, three 10 millimeter nuts, four. Four 10 millimeter nuts, and then we should be able to access the rest of the 10 millimeter nuts holding it in. Okay, so here we go. Okay, for the wiper motor and the wipe, the rest of the wiper cowl, I'm gonna be using my Milwaukee with a 10 millimeter socket. So I'll start by unplugging the motor, first of all. So, we'll get this nut off. This one. Get three, four. Four 10 millimeter nuts, like so. Okay, so these are the ones holding the wiper motor in. Now I can pull that motor out of its house. House, house, house. Boom, just like that. Okay, so here's the wiper motor. Comes out with four nuts. Undo the connector and you can pull it out of there. All right, so now we have access to all the rest of the 10 millimeter bolts that are holding this wiper cowl in. Uh, I think there's about eight or ten of them. I'll let you know as soon as I take them off, but right now uh, All these nuts gotta come off. All these bolts are coming off one, two. If you have a magnetic tray like this use it put your bolts there don't lose them So Comes in handy if you have an extension like this to help you access the bolts that are deeper into the cowl. This one is a six inch extension. So it looks like I got all the nuts to help the bolts out. If you don't have a clip remover, a little set of dikes like this will do. You don't want to cut through that, you just want to grab the clip and pry it up. Now we can run this harness out of the cowl right here. There's a chingadera, you wanna get this out of there. Now we should be able to slide this out. And we look, we look ready. Okay, so this comes up. All right, we're gonna keep going here with the same, with the same 10 millimeter socket to remove the rest of this stuff. Take this out of the way, battery hold down. When you disconnect the battery, you want to go with the negative first. Battery's out. Battery tray right here. Alright, I'm going to be removing this cover right here. What you need for that is a 5mm hex socket like this. If you don't have one of these, try using a Torx that's similar in size or a flathead screwdriver that's the same width across as the head of this hex, which should be 5 millimeters. Cover off little clips that you try to you, you got to be careful with these two little clips because they clip onto the uh, chingadera right here and you want to be very careful with these hoses right here two lines that go here on the box all right now that i'm here i'm going to remove the whole air box as an assembly so I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna unbolt it from the throttle body. This way everything comes out as one piece and I don't have a bunch of little pieces laying around. So this gets unhooked from here. You can do this with your hands. Okay. And I should be able to take it off from here. You gotta be careful if any of these air ducts are brittle. Like this one is right here. It's actually ripped right now. Boom, right there, you can see how it's torn. That's gonna allow extra air to get in through here and bypass the mass airflow and you're gonna have a lean code or misfire codes. Your engine's gonna run a little bit rough, so I'm gonna keep working here. This is what I'm talking about, the air duct right there. You gotta be careful. All right, now that we're here, I can remove the air box, the rest of this. See that right there? There's just three 10 millimeter nuts. Comes right out. Now that I'm here, 
you guys can see where the thermostat is at it lives right in there hard to get you focused in there because of all this clutter there's a lot of stuff here uh, 2006 Toyota Sienna this is what it looks like right now but the thermostat lives right down there if you follow this pipe down here it'll take you directly to the thermostat then you can take it off using a 10 millimeter socket to remove those 10 millimeter bolts and it'll come right off you got to undo this 12 from here follow the pipe and you'll find it so I'm gonna set you guys up I'm gonna keep working here then the manifold comes off we'll do the plugs we'll do these plugs and then we'll get this truck done what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the intake first. I'm going to disconnect all these hoses from the throttle body. There's two coolant hoses right here. There's a vacuum hose here. I got to unplug the throttle body connector. And then there's a vacuum hose over here that goes to the brake booster. All those got to come off. Then I got to disconnect this little um, assembly of solenoids and vacuum switching valves is what they call them. And then after this, I can access the bolts that are right here on the intake manifold. So we're gonna keep working here. Right now, it is like 10.30. I can't show you because I'm actually recording on my phone now because I'm having camera issues, but it's all good. Now you are gonna leak some coolant, so make sure you have something underneath to catch all the coolant. I'm gonna undo these clamps here. So hopefully I'm not blocking you. I can't see what I'm doing here. Throttle body connector. Uh, we're moving this out of the way, this clamp here. Okay, put it there. Now what you want to do is take these hoses, wiggle them up and down so you can break the seal and then you can pry against the throttle body slightly and you can see the hose just starts coming off pretty much by itself. And we got no cooling coming, so that's a good thing. All right, same thing here. Take it, break the seal. Ah, there it is. Okay, so two cooling hoses are off. Same thing with the vacuum line, you want to play with it first up and down and then you can um, pry slightly against the throttle body to get it out. See that? Just like that. Okay, so we'll move that up like that. And then we got the brake booster hose over here. Undo that, move it out of the way. Play with it up and down. Once it's free, boom, just like that. Okay. Now you gotta be careful because this is an old truck. It's an old van and a lot of these hoses can be brittle because they get hard with age because they're all going through that temperature change of getting hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold and then before you know it, they're hard. And when it's time for you to work on the van, boom, they break. You guys saw that with the intake ducts right now. I'm gonna recommend those to the customer. There's not gonna be any labor added on top of that because removing those is part of the job so okay so now i'm going to remove this little assembly of solenoids here uh this little assembly is just held down by two 10 millimeter nuts this right here boom eight i was right so you're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket and an eight millimeter hex fold now i know that behind the manifold on this side there's a bracket that holds the manifold to the head or to the block and on that side there's also a bracket that holds the head to the block you've seen it on the other toyota sienna video that i've showed you i can't show you what's back there but once i take it off i'll show you what i'm talking about all right so the first thing i like to do is break these um, nuts off with a ratchet first okay now i'm gonna start from the outside i know i should have started with this 14 first See, while I'm here, I can remove this vacuum hose from here out of the way. Break this 14 loose. Okay. Now there's also a ground strap here that goes over here to the strut tower. It's also a 10 millimeter, so let me remove that first. Okay. And what I recommend you do is if you're taking grounds like this off and you have the nuts here, just put them back where they're going to go. This way, when you go back, you know that that nut goes right there in that spot. 14s right here and there's four eight millimeter hex bolts okay now we can remove this little plate here and I'm gonna set this with these and the two nuts now once we have this all loose you want to try and wiggle the manifold and as you can see it's not budging so 
You gotta see what's holding it in, and I'm pretty sure those two brackets on the back of the manifold, so I gotta reach in there. Where is the bracket? Ah, I see the bracket. I'll show you guys where the bracket's at. So there's a bracket right back there. Let's see. Boom, so there's a bracket right there in the back of the manifold. I have to, I believe there's a 12 millimeter bolt holding that in, and then I gotta dig back here and find the other one. So, all right, so it's at this point that I jump on top of the end. I feel, I feel, what do I feel? I think here's a bracket here. And I feel a bracket here, right by the throttle body. It looks like a 12, well it feels like a 12. It feels like a 12 or a 14 right here. Yeah, there it is. Boom. Yeah, right there. Take it all the way by hand now. Beautiful. All right, there it is. A little 14 millimeter in the back by the throttle body. All right, so that right there was one of the bolts, 14 millimeter in the back of the intake. That was a pain in the ass. Now, can you imagine this one back here? Uh, if you guys are working on this van, 2006 Toyota Sienna, back there, you see that line right there? That line goes up and that way, and it covers the head of that 14 millimeter bolt. So that makes it even worse. I'm gonna set you guys down. You guys are gonna see me struggle, but we'll get it off. And then after that, I think we can wiggle this and take manifold out of here. After that, we should be able to access the coils, the plugs, and then I'll do these three coils and these three plugs, and then that's a tune-up for this Toyota Sienna, then we'll put everything back. Many, many minutes later. 112, 114, on the back of the intake, now this thing should come off. Oh, what the fuck, still held on? All right, looks like I'm missing one bracket. There's another bracket, fucking Toyota insecurities, fuck. So there's this one here, and then there's two over there on that side. I'm missing one bracket over there, one bolt, and I'm gonna take that off. Then this intake should come off. Why would you put three fucking brackets holding an intake? This thing's a pain in the ass, and it's... On the back of the intake on that side also, another 12 millimeter nut. There's no hoses that I forgot. Now it moves. Now we're moving. Now look, I don't know if you guys can see this, but somebody has been here already and they put silicone. Why would you put silicone around a rubber gasket that's already sealing? Fucking people, man. There you go. Ah, se ocupan huevos. Okay. Now, boom, the fucking manifold is off. This is where we are at now. This is where we're at. All right, so you can see right here, this is one of the brackets that holds it on there. That's where another bracket goes. And that's where another bracket goes. And you can see those three fuckers back there. Don't say fuckers, you cuss too much. All right, so there it is. Now I can access the three coils, my three spark plugs. If I were to do valve cover gaskets, this is what it would take. But we're getting there, we're getting there. I can't show you what time it is because I'm actually filming on my phone now. But one thing I don't like, why would you silicone the, whatever, I got nothing to say there. It speaks for itself. Time to do the plugs, no, not the plugs. I mean, yeah, time to do the spark plugs. And uh, we're putting this back together. I got to clean this up real well though, so here we go. Uh, we ran into something else, guys. Look. I'm taking off the ignition coils. And if you look closely, the same motherfucker that put silicone on the intake broke these connectors and put silicone so that these connectors won't come back off. <clears throat> to each his own, you know? There's shitty mechanics that just ruin it for the rest of us. Well, I gotta figure something out. Um, I'm gonna keep going here. I can't pull the coils all the way out, can I? If I can pull them all the way out, I won't even mess with them because I don't wanna put glue on these or anything like that. I want to do a proper a proper repair here. And a proper repair would be swap the connectors. All right, as you can see, I was able to pull the plugs, I mean, pull the coils all the way out without disturbing the connection because I don't want to mess with that. I would rather get new connectors, but at this time of the day, I can't get them. I would have to call a customer. I would have to keep the car another day. And that's just not happening. So I'm not disturbing the connections. Right now I'm going to swap the plugs and then we're going to start putting everything back together. All right, guys, got these spark plugs out on the back bank. 
and just looking at these spark plugs they don't look like they don't look too bad you know i don't know if somebody changed these plugs recently but all right so i'm gonna go ahead and continue here i'm gonna put the new plugs in these are the old plugs new plugs are going in we're using denso iridium because that's what it calls for and yeah we're gonna get putting everything back together plugs in in the back got the coils back in and now what i'm gonna do is clean up the intake manifold put new gaskets on there drop the manifold back inside i should be able to just finish off the rest of it pretty easily this right here is the hardest part of the job but once again guys if you're taking off your manifold buy the gaskets it's only like 20 or 30 bucks it's not expensive you're gonna need it don't do none of this crap right here this is eventually gonna give you a vacuum leak and it's gonna make your engine run like crap so right now i'm just gonna take a little blade and scrape all this crap out of here and i'm gonna cover it with new gaskets so let me do that real quick and then uh we'll come back and throw this thing back in all right as you guys can see i got the new gasket in here there's still some of this other crap left on here but guys if you guys have a gasket already there's no need for extra silicone on there there's already rubber on here. That's like you're wearing a fucking rubber on top of a rubber because you're afraid something might go wrong during the combustion process, you know? Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. I'm gonna drop this back inside right now. We're gonna put everything back and then do the front plugs and we'll get on that thermostat and finish this one off, okay? I know I keep saying that, but it's just little shit like this keeps popping up and it's just like, why? Why would you do this? Don't double rubber that shit. This is where we're at right now. I just put the intake manifold back inside. These uh, nuts and bolts are in there loosely. They're just threaded on there, a couple threads so that I can wiggle the manifold up and down. So that when I put those two 12s on the back over here, I can um, get them on the right angle and, and get them threaded in there. So these two are in already. The other one on this side is also in. So everything's going back the, uh, the way it was. I know a lot of you guys don't like to put all that shit back because it's a pain in the ass. But trust me, it helps with vibration. And think about this. This is a plastic manifold. Pretty easy to crack. All right, so just make sure you put everything back the way it was. I mean, especially if it's a customer's car. Now that everything's back in place, what I'm gonna do right now is uh, tighten these manifold bolts. Then I'll go ahead and tighten the back ones down. I'll make sure all my hoses are in. Make sure I don't leave any connections uh, disconnected. Make sure everything's drawn it properly so that nothing gets pinched or kink. And I'm gonna drop that back inside. Keep working into the night. Right now, I'm just gonna finish tightening everything up. Let me see, see if these coolant hoses will go back. Okay. This one goes back in here. Make sure I don't forget anything. Back in one goes in here. My throttle body connector in there. I'm gonna tighten these down right now. Okay, I'm gonna start from the middle. Start with this one, and I'm gonna work my way out. 14, 14. Right now everything's just going hand tight. After a while you'll get a feel for them. You can even make your own. <coughs> they are manifold bolts for a plastic manifold. So they probably don't require a lot of torque. I'm guessing tighten this one. All right, now that these manifold bolts are tight, I will go back there and tighten those two, and I'll go back here and tighten this one. All right, guys, I got everything tightened up right here. I put these hoses, the two for the coolant. Um, the one for the vacuum comes from this little assembly with the solenoids over here. I got that brake booster back. I got my uh, TPS, throttle body connector back. Everything on this side is good. These two bolts are here behind the, behind the manifold that go to the brackets. Those are tight. All these are tight. The one on that side is tight. Right now, I'm gonna drop this back inside and where does this go? Uh, 
gotta make sure none of the hoses get kinked or nothing like that. When you drop this in, here's that vacuum hose that goes on here. You got you gotta let your customers know, you know, that some shit might break, especially on a car that's this old. So what you can do is is charge a little bit more labor because that extra money is gonna cover for you know little vacuum lines that break. Um or any, any other broken hoses or, or anything else that's unforeseen like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the throttle body for this guy too, since I'm already here as part of the tune up. All right, so this is going back in right now. This vacuum hose is back in. So make sure you're organized when you're working, guys. Everything that came off the manifold, I put in one spot. Everything that came off the wiper cowl, I put in another spot. This 10 here. This 10 here with the ground I got another vacuum line here this one goes to this vacuum actuator Check that out over here I'm gonna leave this here because I still gotta do the thermostat on this side but right now what I'm gonna do is these three spark plugs here on the front so let me do this real quick and it looks like they put glue on these too I didn't notice that but these clips always break so I guess it's not a bad repair if I can pull it out all the way. Okay, not this one, not this one. Can I unplug it? Yeah. All right, so I can unplug it. It's good. We'll be all right. Just in here. All right, so here's the plugs that came out of the front bank. This is cylinders two, four, and six. For those of you that want to know, that's cylinder one, three, and five over there. This is two, four, and six right here. That's it, three plugs on this side, cylinders two, four, and six are done. Cylinders one, three, and five are done. Intake is torqued, well, it's tightened. Back brackets are tightened, hoses are in, this is in. Now, you know what? I think I'm gonna make the thermostat a different video and I'm just gonna finish this one off as spark plugs, intake manifold removal. We'll finish this one off. The next day. All right, homies, I got the new thermostat in place. With a new gasket, got this whole thing put back together. I cleaned the throttle body for him. Right now, what I'm gonna do is finish putting on the rest of the stuff that goes on here, the battery and everything else. And then after this, we're gonna put a funnel on that radiator uh, chingadera. And then we're gonna bleed the cooling system. And then we're gonna get this van out of here and move on because we gotta get this thing done. So let's go. Got everything back together except for that wiper cow now what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna wait before I put that on there and right now I'm just gonna bleed the cooling system I got my spill free funnel in there and I'm doing that right now because if I put the wiper cow and everything back in place then I'm gonna have to use an adapter for this which I don't have so it's easier for me to bleed it right now before I put anything back on the wipers plus um, having all this disconnected and the wipers that's not going to affect the way my engine runs or anything like that so um, it should be okay and i did let the customer know about these air boots these intake ducts that are torn and he's going to try to get them for me and then we'll put them on for him so this is where we're at right now everything's back together i'm about to start the car up and we're going to bleed the cooling system Air is coming out. And that's me squeezing the hose right there, just helping it out. Now what you want to do inside, <clears throat> inside of here, what you want to do is turn your knobs to heater so that if you have any um, any heater control valves, 
then all the coolant is able to pass in and this way you don't have any um, air pockets in your heating system all right so i'm just gonna let that run for a little bit i got my funnel up in there you can't see it from here and then um i gotta clear this check engine light and then we'll be good to go so i'll see you guys in a little bit i'm gonna let it run a little bit until the thermostat opens and the fans kick in after this i should have no air pockets in the system once the thermostat opens coolant flows and then if any air is trapped over here it'll come back and escape so um we're gonna give this a couple minutes once i feel the fans kick in right now they're not on it's been about five minutes with the engine running you want to go ahead and feel this hose this is hot when the when the thermostat opens this hose should be just the same and right now it's just cold to the touch fans are still not running you can see that right there so i'm gonna go rev it up a little bit and i'm gonna help this car out what i want to see right now is i want to get a little bit of heat in here turn the ac okay i can feel a little bit of heat and the car's not overheating you can see over here on the right of your screen the car's not overheating uh, we're gonna go look right now see if the fans kicked in and then um I'll take my funnel out of there and I'll finish putting the rest of this stuff back together. Right. I don't know if you guys can see that but the fans just kicked in. This hose is hot and this hose right here is just as hot. This car is good. No overheating. That, temp that hose and that hose have to be about the same temperature once the thermostat opens and everything is recirculating. I wish that I had like a little infrared gun so that I can show you the temperature of the hoses but that one is just as hot as that one and my fans just kicked in and they just went off so that's a good thing okay i'm gonna turn this off i'm gonna finish putting the rest of this back together get my funnel out of there and then we're gonna call this one a fix Alright guys, so that's it, 2006, 2007 Toyota Sienna with the 3.3 liter engine. Sparklers got done, thermostat got done. We bled the system, there's no more overheating. Everything is fixed on this one, so eso es todo. Alright homie, so that's it. 2006 Toyota Sienna with the 3.3 liter engine. Got it done, spark plugs, thermostat let the system now all that's left is to give it a good test drive i clear the check engine light so there's no more codes and after this we get paid we move on to the next one so if you made it this far to the end of the video i want to thank you guys for watching don't forget to drop a big thumbs up for me that's going to help the channel grow if you're new here hit that subscribe button hit that little bell it's going to let you know when i drop new videos that's it homies i'm out i gotta go i'll see you guys on the next one peace